Live from the Oracle Conference Center in the heart of Silicon Valley, extracting the signal from the noise, it's theCUBE, covering the Oracle Cloud Lunch, brought to you by Oracle. Now your host, John Furrier and Dave Vellante. Hello everyone, welcome to theCUBE, SiliconANGLE's flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. Welcome to our special presentation of Oracle's cloud announcement. This is our pre-gaming session. I'm John Furrier with my co-host Dave Vellante with Wikibon.org. We're here to break down the Oracle cloud announcement. Our first guest is Steve Tahibs, SVP of PASS, BI, EMP of Business Group. Welcome to theCUBE. Thanks for having me. So the room is empty right now. In a few yes. minutes it's going to be packed with, with the press, top press core and customers and partners. Uh, Larry Ellison's keynote. Um, yes. I'll see you guys we got a big announcement, we don't want to reveal too much, but the platform of cloud certainly is, is legit in terms of mind the customer. Now with an Oracle, the earnings were out, you're seeing huge growth. Yes. I mean, Larry Ellison's putting cloud into everything in the cloud. Yep. Oracle is all in on cloud. Give us a quick update from your perspective, what's happening? Yeah, no worries. Yeah, I think as you'd said, if you saw from the earnings release, there's a great amount of momentum around cloud, you know, not only from a bookings perspective, but when you look at the growth rates compare, when you look at the number of customers we're adding, you know, over 1,400 customers just in platform services alone, compared to 400 uh, just last quarter. So we're seeing tremendous adoption, you know, for the cloud. And today what's really exciting is, you know, in addition, we're going to continue to show that commitment we've made, uh, where we're going to roll out a suite of new services that both Larry and then Thomas Curian are going to talk about. We're also going to see some of the products in action as well. So the, the Oracle growth is attracting a lot of talent. You're new to Oracle. I am. So talk about why Oracle, they're pulling back a lot of talent, certainly ex-Oracle yeah. folks we've interviewed in the past, um, but you're seeing a renaissance of folks who are really seasoned professionals coming back to Oracle. Why, what's the attraction? Yeah. Well, first for me, I mean, probably the big reason I came back was actually to be on the Cube. So I just want to put that out <laughs> right now. So that was sort of part of the deal. But, uh, you know, to be honest, it's what you said. I've been in the Valley, born and raised, been here for uh, 22 plus years in, in terms of tech. Um, I actually remember growing up in the area where there wasn't an Oracle. There used to be this theme park with animals running around all over the place. And I actually watched those Oracle buildings go up, you know, and I watched what incredible company Oracle has become. And I do believe and why I joined is because I believe our best days are still ahead of us. Um, I've been fortunate enough to touch every single part of the Oracle stack. I've been in networking, I've been in storage, I've been in compute, security, mobility, cloud. And I think, you know, those pieces separate are interesting, but at the end of the day, that aggregation is really important. And that's what Oracle uniquely provides. I mean, we have the entire stack, we seamlessly integrate them. And so from an end user's perspective, they're much greater than the sum of the parts. The solutions that we can offer are incredible. And then also got to step back and look at what that customer's journey is. You know, we talk about premise versus cloud and the answer is it's both. You know, it's not an either or discussion. And you know, we can seamlessly bridge people from one to the other where we're uniquely differentiated is everything, all the technology, all the skill sets people have learned on premise to operate our equipment to run applications are the same things in the cloud. Um, and, and that's where I think we have competitive differentiation as well, which I'd love to talk to you about, but that's our opportunity. You know, this company's made a major investment understanding where the market's going. And uh, so that's why I was excited uh, to come here. So Steve, a lot of people might say, okay, well, the cloud, it's, it, yes, it's early days, it's still a small portion of the $2 trillion you know, business, mm -hmm. uh, but everybody's doing cloud. You know, now Oracle's coming in, making a lot of noise, you got a lot of marketing power. Are you, are you late to cloud? You know, what's really, where's the substance of your cloud? Can yeah. you sort of, sort of con convince us that this is not just cloud washing? Yeah, no, I agree. That's actually a good point. And I think what, what, what you probably saw at Open World in terms of the announcements we made, and I think, Proof's going to be in the pudding today when you see the continued commitment and the amount of services that we're rolling out. And this doesn't happen overnight. So when you look at competitors and they talk cloud, you might get a filibuster and some hand waving. But at the end of the day, this has been decades in development. I mean, this is a vision the team has had for quite some time. Um, and so this isn't or overnight success. This is understanding the customer's needs and doing it the right way, not just popping something in the cloud that doesn't work with your legacy equipment. For instance, Microsoft SQL Server premise doesn't work with Microsoft SQL Server and cloud. So Oracle has been very thoughtful, you know, 70 plus billions of dollars worth of investment over a decade's worth of um, work in order to get us here. And what I will say, just one of the, when you look at Oracle, it's about four decades old now. 
So if you think about every single major transition that's happened in technology, mainframe to client server to internet to mobile to cloud, I mean, Oracle's been there to help transition people, to connect information to applications, you know, people to their data, and that's what we're still doing today. And so I think you know, that was the approach we took. You know, for over 35 years, we've been about the same thing. We've let customers through transitions. You know, you know, now it's cloud and whatever's next. So you summarized it, uh, or you touched on it. Can you summarize the sort of cloud, Oracle cloud strategy for us? Yeah, absolutely. I think it's a very comprehensive strategy that looks at all pieces. Because at the end of the day, you're going to need choice. You're going to, you know, whether that's, and so if you look at the layers of the stack, we have everything from infrastructure as a service. So Amazon kind of does good there but you have to have that piece as well as platform as a service, so that full operating environment upon which you can develop apps, run your workloads, what have you. And then at the top level, those applications as well, the SaaS applications. And so all of those in aggregate, that full stack working together, um, is really where we differentiate ourselves and why we step back and said holistically, what's the right you know, pieces we need to deliver in order to best support our customers. Steve, I want to ask you about the customer environment. You mentioned, um, obviously, the trend towards the growth 1,400 plus new customers last quarter in cloud. But Amazon certainly changed the game. And you're seeing what Amazon has shown on the cloud. Integrated stack is critical. Oracle has made an investment. We've talked about this in theCUBE. You know, six years ago when we first started going to Oracle Open World with theCUBE was Larry's engineered system was really telegraphing that kind of trend. Yep. You know, he wanted to be the, you know, the iPhone of the data centers was, was a quote I think he made. Yeah. But that's kind of playing. That investment was kind of really looking at more of the hardware, but now go to fast forward to cloud with Amazon kind of telegraphing the way customers want to consume. What is it about Oracle's integrated approach that, that you find the most relevant for customers? Yeah, I think that's right. I mean, I think if you saw us pioneering that approach on premise, so think about taking that same vision and applying it to cloud. So again, uh, I mean, if you look at what we have, we take it a step further. It's not just an integrated stack, but then it's the platform as a service, the security, the mobility, the BI, all the applications we layer on top from a CRM perspective, from a marketing perspective, from an HR perspective. So think about what you have to do today. I could go and I can get uh, my Workday here, my Salesforce here, my Marketo here. You know, I can go, you know, and it's just this, how do you manage that? I can go get some compute and service from Amazon and I have to tie that into my premise-based applications. And at some point, you know, that becomes a pretty difficult task. Um, uh, and so to, to think about how you could step back, have a fully integrated stack, a full engineered system in the cloud, and I'm sort of glad you set that up because stay tuned, we'll have some news there as well where we leverage that technology in the cloud. Um, you know, that's something I don't think anybody else can say. Yeah, I always, Dave and I always talk about like sports analogies and NASCAR is kind of the one we use where the cars are jockeying and then someone slingshots out in front. Oracle's yeah. kind of been behind the pack now in the middle of the pack now looks like you guys are going to be leading. But at the end of the game, it's all about the apps. So the engine yeah. of innovation, what do you call it, engineered systems or whatnot, all customers yep, care about agree. is I got to power the apps and I'm trying to abstract away the infrastructure. It seems to be the big trend. Yep. So how are you guys seeing the customer environment? Because new apps is one, yep. okay. Um, moving existing apps, yeah, workloads, apps. and then integration. So those are kind of three major yeah. areas that we see uh, in our research around that. What, how does it, does it hit all three? What's that all about? It and absolutely does. You know, so I mean, I think that's the exciting thing. I do agree, it's all about apps at the end of the day. It's been a big part of my career in apps, so infrastructure is good, but at the end of the day, you know, you how do you You have an engine, it? you got to have a nice engine in you there. You have right? a nice engine, uh, yeah, but yeah. you're right. And I do think, look at our stack. I mean, we have the new apps, you know, that covers sort of everything you need from a customer experience to the run the business, ERP, your HR systems, your sales, your marketing systems. You know, Oracle has all of that, and we can offer that to any segment of the market. So that's really exciting. Think about those enterprise apps that people develop today. You know, there might be these legacy apps that have a long tail that people have built for, built for their finance, their transportation, their, 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 their healthcare, whatever these apps might be. How do you bring those forward and, and mobilize them? How do you bring those forward and leverage the cloud while still securing them? And then how do you tie them into these new applications? Because at the end of the day, you need some tie. And that's something we can uniquely do. So we have a platform that allows you to bring applications forward to the cloud and mobilize them. We have a platform that allows you to take new apps and extend their capabilities and integrate them and manage them across premise and hybrid. And so I think uh, you know, that's perfectly stated and when you really take a good look at the Oracle offering, you know, why we're so differentiated and why I think we offer choice and can uniquely guide uh, customers through this journey. So you guys aren't afraid to talk about the competition. So let's talk about the competition. <laughs> you mentioned you know, a, a Microsoft Nuance with SQL Server. Uh, the two biggies on the, in the app side, you know, Workday and Salesforce, yeah. came up a lot. They came up on the, on the earnings call. Yeah. 
uh, made a big point about being much, much larger than Workday. Yeah. Uh, and then not bigger than Salesforce, but growing significantly faster, faster and basically laying down the gauntlet, saying we will be larger. We will be Talk larger. about the competition and where you fit and yeah, why you're so. a better option for customers. Great, well I think it goes to the prior discussion, right? I mean, some of these things are one off. So, you know, if I'm a Salesforce customer and I'm looking at developing apps, okay, first of all, Salesforce doesn't have a premise solution. So right there, what do I do with that entire investment I made in legacy apps? How do I bring that forward? I might have a proprietary um, platform and people will develop applications on it, but those are going to be things that are probably tightly binded to the Salesforce platform and not at the end of the day might be, you know, enterprise applications that customers use to run their business. So I think that's differentiated. And again, from a Workday perspective, if you can get the same things from us with everything else you might need. I think that's why we're winning. Um, you know, you saw it in the momentum, you saw it in the amount of customers we're adding, um, the growth rates compared to both. And you're right, uh, you know, we did 858 million all in this year on SaaS and PaaS. Um, 400 plus million of that was in Q4 alone when you look at the momentum. You know, we're targeting doing another 1.5 to 2 billion next year. So the growth rates, I think, speak for themselves. The customer adoption speaks for themselves. Later on in the Cube, and I'll be hosting a panel later, you're going to hear from customers who have chosen to adopt the Oracle solutions. And I know you guys are going to get into the why. And, and so I think that's where we're different than the competitors. And I'm also hearing that, that you, Larry talks about, with the push of a button, yeah. you could take your on-premises app and bring it to the cloud. Yeah. I mean, first of all, is, well, so that's sort of the, the, the clear message to customers and the differentiation. Is it really that simple? Yeah, you know, it's actually interesting. Stay tuned today, because you will see demonstrations of that as well. Databases, storage, you know, how do we manage integration? Uh, how do we create and move workloads? And that's where we're differentiated. At the end of the day, you want a single pane of glass that you can manage all your environments. I mean, that's what ultimately what we're trying to get to, and that's what Oracle's delivering. And then we're, we can uniquely do that because we don't have, okay, I'm Amazon and Salesforce, I don't have anything on premise, right? I'm Microsoft, my premise and my cloud are different. So now when you base both sections on the same technology, the same software, I can more easily migrate. So you're just focusing on creating the tools that can move them from one place to the other and back. And we're seeing that all over the place. People are, the migration to the cloud is definitely happening, but it's not happening overnight. It will eventually all be cloud in our opinion, but you know, we see customers saying, hey, I don't want to risk too much because the cloud's not fully baked out in their, in their minds at least. Yeah. So I got to ask you about um, uh, your, your personal background, how that ties to some of the Oracle things you, we, we were talking about here. You had mentioned prior to coming on camera that you had a variety of different uh, jobs over the years from you know, 10 base T, Ethernet, all the way up to through stores. You've touched a lot of components in the stack. Yeah. What is it about the integrated approach that customers should focus on? What should they look at and as they evaluate in this whole noise of cloud these days. Big data is certainly a big part of that. Analytics is driving yep. a big part of it. Storage, it's all the touch points are all there. Yeah. But integration is a huge discussion. So as a CXO out there, what, are, what should they look at from your experience and, and how, how, do you, how do you talk to that one yeah. component? No, it's a, great, it's a great question. And I think it goes back to a little bit of what we talked about. And, and actually this is like near and dear to my heart. So yeah, I'm born and raised in Bay Area. I'm actually the son of a CIO. So um, my dad managed this and I, and I, you know, and I- So you were pulling cables as a kid? I know? was pulling cables. I was doing like internships at Acer, like for summer, believe it or not. So yeah, I was actually was putting pulling cables. Other kids got tools, go, putting the, you know, yeah, Other kids got to go to baseball kid. camp. I was, I was pulling cat 40. <laughs> <laughs> I was pulling cat cables. Um, that's a great, but you know, I mean, if you think about again, these heterogeneous environments, we have all these different pieces. I have my storage here, I have my compute here, I'm trying to virtualize this environment. I have these different apps that don't tie. So, I mean, ultimately the vision of cloud is to okay. aggregate and simplify everything. And I think we've done that with the engineered services on premise and we can offer that in cloud. So think about having to facilitate the management as well as the business change across all of that um, versus uh, just having this integrated stack. So if I want storage, I can have it. If I want to drop my applications on top of the storage and the compute, I have it in infrastructure layer, I can do that versus having to shift over. I can tie the applications into that platform environment. So I think that's where we actually differentiate. What about the hidden cost equation? That always comes up, you know, the shark fin, tip of the iceberg, whatever metaphors used in IT, there's always that hidden cost. What, what does cloud offer economically that minimizes those hidden costs? Yeah, well it's actually interesting, you'll see some very interesting compares to the competition today, where you, know, you have, let's say the, the cost of procuring it in the first place, you go from you know, kind of a traditional CapEx to OpEx, where um, you have the, the, the cost saved in provisioning, where we'll show you know, 95 discrete steps to provision a database versus five clicks in the cloud. 
you know, so what do I do with that bandwidth? You know, I can put it on doing what matters the most, serving my customers. Um, when you look at environment, okay, Amazon might save you on the infrastructure cost, but then you still have the cost of the software, you still have the cost of the ongoing maintenance. You go to Oracle and we can uniquely handle that for you, right? So you don't need, we can do the database management for you. We can do the maintenance for you. If I'm with somebody else, you're not quite going to get that. And so I think you, Oracle uniquely can actually address some of the cost savings uh, compared to others. So the economics are interesting because from a customer standpoint, you might spend more on renting over a 10 year period, yet customers seem willing to do that. Can you talk about that dynamic and what are people actually doing to feel? I mean, your cloud business is growing at a meteoric rate. Yeah. Are they sort of unplugging on premises and moving to the cloud? Is it really more of a hybrid approach? And do they, are they aware that they might actually spend more over say a decade and are they willing to do that and why? Yeah, I think, yeah, so there are a couple parts there. A lot there. of questions in there. Yeah, yeah, there's a lot. I'll try to make sure I get to all of them. Then we'll go back to my summer internships. Um, yeah, you know, it's, I think it's some of everything. Uh, you know, there's workloads that they have on, you know, premise today that they think might make sense. If I look at test dev environments, you know, is it, is it easier to, to sort of, you know, go provision um, equipment, a database, and offer that up to somebody internally? Or five clicks, I have a fully, you know, no set up okay. development environment. And the benefits of that, when you think of speed to market, you know, time to market, transformation, do these guys want to be spending their time managing databases, or do they want to do what they do best? And it's serve their customers, develop differentiated uh, applications, whatever it is that they do to serve their customers, we can take a lot off so they can focus on that. Um, so I think we see some of both. We see hybrid, where there's certain workloads they'll move. There might be certain data sets they, they might want to move to infrastructure. There's applications that they want to move to cloud, but it doesn't mean they can shut down the apps they have on premise right now, so we can come in and help bridge that. And then, yeah, to your point, over time, that could migrate more to cloud. I think different customers are going to be in different parts of that journey over a long period of time. So for us, it's like, you want premise? We got that. You want cloud? We got that. You know, you want to be able to seamlessly manage across both and have that based on the same technology? We can do that as well. And I don't think anybody else can tell that story. We got a question from the crowd chat in here. So Whoa. if you're watching, go to crowdchat.net slash Oracle Pass, B-A-S-S. -S. <laughs> um, so what's, this is a question from the crowd. Uh, what's unique about Oracle? you can move from private to public cloud and back no lock and can you comment yeah. on that, on that co uh, comment? I think uh, it's a little bit of what we talked about before. So when you start with having the same technology in both premise and cloud, it allows you to do very interesting things. Again, when you look at our competitors that don't have something to push back to, if they don't have premise, or what they have on premise is different than what they have on cloud, then you can't quite do that. But if you start with that, start with that fundamental foundational basis of the same technology on premise and cloud, then it really comes down to the work we need to do to be able to seamlessly migrate workloads, migrate data, um, you know, create new instances in the cloud or move them back so if you want to have them migration's a big on. deal, right? So one, migrations. Migrations huge. So new apps, you still can get the benefits of the cloud for a clean sheet of paper or green field apps, if you will, right? Yep. So what's the consequence? If I'm, uh, versus the competition, if they don't have on-prem, what are some of the consequences for the customer? One well, thing, how do you migrate your entire legacy install base? Move your, to Amazon. Your, your infrastructure. I mean, unless you plan on just sort of like shutting down the lights, <laughs> you know? No, I mean, but there's nuances in there. I mean, I just say, oh, you, you know, said move to Amazon. Okay, but that's, which is oh. true, by the way. But to get there, to get from A to B takes a lot of resources, yeah. you got to, you know, you got to staff up, you got to have expertise. Yeah, no, I know, I asked why I asked right? the question, I so, want him to answer. Yeah, but yeah. you're yeah. saying, <laughs> push of a button, right? Is, is right? I mean, it, it, it is, right. well, and then I, I want to push on that push of a button. You can go to Amazon for some infrastructure, but then when you really want to look at platform databases, when you want to look at apps you need to actually run your, your business, you can move to them and then find out, oh, how do I move back? Because this does not have the full integrated suite I need to run my business. So I actually don't expect anybody to do that. And, you know, you'll hear from CIOs today. I mean, I do think it's going to be a hybrid approach. I think it's going to be a phased approach over time. If there's a customer that was born yesterday and wants to be all cloud, we have those solutions and can offer them as well. Well, that's why we use the NASCAR example of, you know, the, all the cars are in the pack. They're all kind of relative. And, and the thing that's interesting is Amazon has proven the shadow IT is really not shadow IT, it's R&D. We've seen customers say, hey, we've kind of endorsed shadow IT, letting people do test and dev in Amazon or other clouds yeah. to validate economics and some of the flexibility options. Um, so I'm, I'm cool with the shadow IT. I think that's a good innovation. 
But the question I want to ask you is relative to your growth last quarter in, in the performance, what's the hottest services that your customers are buying? What is yeah. the what is the one thing? Is there one thing or is it a few things? What's the I hot? I mean, it's multiple thing. I mean, I will say the, the database as a service has been growing really well for us. And if you look at Java is a app development platform and having that run in the cloud now and how quickly you can get to having that provisioned and, and starting to do the work. I mean, obviously, you know, migrating our install base of, of database and Java users to the cloud is, you know, something that, you know, we, we, we take pretty seriously. Um, and it's something that we have the right offer to do. So there's been a lot of focus there, as well as expanding our reach with net new. I mean, you know, we were aggressively going out there, competing head to head, you know, with the, with the, the likes of all the SaaS players out there. And, and to your point, we're seeing success there. Well, we, get, we can really preach the crowd chat. It's, soon our job in the queue will just be reading questions off crowd <laughs> chat. So uh, thanks to Phil Dunn out there. His question from Phil is, what happens if you're not happy with Amazon after you migrate? How do you move off? Yeah, come to Oracle and we'll help you. <laughs> <laughs> Contact uh, your local rep. But you guys got to have yeah. some sort of plan, a, a competitive strategy for yeah. like, how to move customers off I mean, Amazon. absolutely. I mean, we understand yeah. that this isn't sort of a, a, a clean sheet and there have been some customers that have made that decision and have found themselves in a place where they need help to get off it. We can do that. I think you're going to hear from customers today who've made choices to go with some of our competitors for CRM like Salesforce, found it didn't meet their needs in scale and are you know driving a path towards us. So we understand that, and so when you think of migration, when you think about bridging people forward, helping them you know, transform and transition, it might not just be from, from premise, it could be that they have some cloud instantiations that we need to help them bring forward as well. So what's going to happen today, without kind of revealing, or, but just teasing out what's happening with Larry Ellis' keynote here, why is this announcement so big? We've got the press corps lined yeah. up here with special tables, we've got analysts in here, top, yep. top industry folks are here. Yeah, we got Obviously, the cube, we got the, the cube, cube in the house. The cube is here, the cube's in the house, Larry's yeah. here. Um, what's the big uh, positioning from your standpoint? What's the big message yeah. happening here? Why is this such an important event? Yeah, it's a really important event for us. I think you're going to hear a few things. One, you know, Larry is going to talk about the uh, momentum we're seeing in cloud. So we'll get a lot of details around that um, and why we're winning, you know, from an economics perspective, from a provisioning perspective, from a completeness of offering perspective. You're going to hear a lot about that. Um, you're going to hear a host of new services. So I think it really demonstrates our continued commitment. You mentioned about sort of cloud whitewashed. I mean, when you see these services that are rolling out and when you see them demonstrated by Thomas and his team, you're going to understand the amount of work that went into that and the real solutions that we're, we're bringing to market and problems we're helping to solve. Um, so you're going to see a lot of that and I'm really excited to be hosting a customer panel later. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to have the likes of Avaya and Accenture and JDS Uniphase and Pharmavite. These guys who are not only IT leaders but are business leaders um, and they'll talk about that changing role of IT and, and how cloud uh, Cloud enables that and why they decided to partner with Oracle. Steve, I want to get your perspective. The last couple of minutes we have left with sure. you is just on data. Okay, and there's no data cloud in the announcement yet, so, but the data's everywhere now. So we were just at the Hadoop Summit talking about how the analytics market, BI in particular, and real time is changing the game on how people are getting insights out of the data. Yeah. And obviously you need an engine to power that. So how do you look at that market from an from a intelligence standpoint, from a data-driven yep. enterprise, which what everyone wants to, to be, yeah. Um, what is the role of data? Because we were speculating on theCUBE at Hadoop Summit that the analytics market's kind of been sideways a little bit, yep. waiting for a lift, and we yeah. think the cloud is that engine. I agree. So it's DevOps and the cloud seem to be the perfect fit for powering the next generation analytics. Do you agree? Can you comment? Yeah, I agree 100%. It's funny, you sort of said earlier, it's all about the apps, but at the end of the day, the data powers a lot of this as well. And being able to visualize, you know, and get that, you know, actionable intelligence from the data is really important. And what I, you know, like uh, about Oracle, and, you know, uh, you know, I'm familiar with a lot of these folks out there, is to really have that integrated stack. So first of all, how do I aggregate all the information from all these disparate sources, right? Whether it's Hadoop, whether it's Oracle, you know, all these different pieces. So first I have to be able to collect it, and then I have to have the tools that mine it, give me the visualization, allow me to interpret it, plot it however I like, really democratize the access to that information. And you know, Oracle provides that full stack. So I could go to Tableau for this piece, or I could go to IBM for this piece, or I could come to you know, a single vendor that can give me from top to bottom, you know, starting from bottoms up, how do I collect that information? And ultimately, how do I analyze and get the insights out of it? So it's critical. You'll actually hear some exciting announcements. Yeah. I think you're trying to trick me into maybe like uh, <laughs> saying something I shouldn't, but uh, stay tuned because well, yeah, you know, exciting it could get you in big <laughs> trouble. But if that's the strategy, which is clear, then you got to have essentially one of everything, Number first of all, and then you also have the best of breed yes. in everything. So that requires a lot of R&D investment. It does. And a lot, a lot of effort. 
<laughs> it does. I mean, and I, I tell you what, you know, coming in about when we say new, probably just a little over 100 days in, and to see the, the level of commitment from this engineering yeah. team, I mean, it's mind-boggling what they've delivered, what you're going to hear them deliver today, and what I know they, they continue to plan to deliver. So yeah. that commitment is there, the investment is there. We understand it's, it's not just about the suite, but you can't have a suite where it's yeah. not best in breed across the board. But is that right though? So you guys are committing to best of breed, not just the convenience of the suite, right? It's no, it's not it's just both. about filling holes. At the end yeah. of the day, we, we compete individually. Yeah. So we need to be best yeah. of breed on a particular point, yeah. but then we'll also compete with the fully integrated suite. And um, so we have to do both. I don't think it's either or. Final question, Phil in the crowd is like a virtual co-host in the queue. <laughs> Phil, Thank you, shout out to you. Great, great questions and commentary, of course. Okay. Uh, I think he's an Oracle employee, looks like uh, an ex-Sun. I think it's my mom's eight, code 18, name. 18, 18 <laughs> years at Sun. But he brings up a good point about the commoditization in public cloud. And, and you know, Dave actually was first on record years ago saying this whole race to zero was complete BS and Amazon was being the poster child to race to zero. And, but yet, the, you know, they're going to do 10 billion potentially look at, this look year. At look, look at that they're, race they're to zero. as big as EMCs. Look how big, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, take that 20% in the storage business, could be a couple billion dollars right there. So, yeah. the, you know, Azure, Amazon all on price pressure. So quickly comment on the pricing game and where's the differentiation? Yeah, I actually think you're going to hear some very exciting news on that. So Phil might be like a teeing us up for the good discussion that Larry's right. going to have today. <laughs> you know, I think at the end of the day, we, we have to be price competitive. Um, I also think you're going to see areas where we can lead in pricing yeah. out there. And one of the benefits, again, you go to, you know, sort of Oracle being vertically integrated. I mean, you know, we own the pieces down to the silicon, right? So there's some very interesting things that we can do to be competitive with folks out there from an uh, infrastructure as a yeah. service um, perspective. And you'll hear news about that. And then I think, and then again, it's like, how do you drive value up the stack? I mean, platform as a service. We know Amazon's trying to get into that space to increase margins. Um, you know, then how do you look at a software as a service offering with multiple yeah. multi-pillar applications to drop on top. So we believe if customers need infrastructure, we'll, right. we'll be there to help provide whatever they need, but we can also you know, drive value by moving them up the stack. All right, Steve, we're getting, we're getting uh, on tight on time. Thanks so Great. much for your insights. For you know, vertically integrated, cool, but we're going to drill into horizontally scalable, which is the DevOps ethos as well. But doing both is going to be very key. Uh, yeah. Congratulations. We'll hear more here from Oracle. Here's the Cube here live in Redwood Shores, California for the Oracle Cloud launch. We'll be right back with more pre-gaming. Larry Ellison's keynote after this short break.